All right, we'll go ahead and call to order the meeting of the New Mexico Off-Highway Vehicle Advisory Council uh, or committee. Uh, we'll start with the roll call. Roll call. All right. Off-Highway Vehicle Board Chairman Rick Alcon. Present. OHV Board Member John Montjoy. OHV Board Member Gerald Chacon. OHV Board Member John Diamond. OHV Board Member Randy Jones and OHB board member, Stephen Henry. Here, I'm here. Okay, introduction of guests. I don't have a list of those, so if we have guests or wanna do the introductions now, we can do that. Um, we, we actually, we actually, with our guests, um, Rick, they're they're all muted up, and it would take quite a while to run through through them all. Um, we've tip typically been skipping that, but when we get to a point that uh, they want to provide comment, then they can just raise their hand, and I'll let you know, and we can bring them in. Okay, and then have them introduce themselves at that time. Absolutely. Okay, we'll defer item number four to the end. Uh, I mean, item number three, item number four, if you'll give us a general program update, I assume that is you, Mr. Seidel. Yes, sir. Chairman Alcon, uh, and every welcome everyone that's attending tonight. I am Matt Seidel, the Off-Highway Vehicle Program Manager. I'll be giving the general overview of the program update to include enforcement and in our education efforts. Um, our law enforcement coordinator is Officer Desi Ortiz, and our education coordinator is Christopher Johnson. And I would ask those guys to jump in if they, they see fit. But uh, I got some great news. As you can tell, the Child Safety Fund, after a little over four years, is recouped. This is the first year since fiscal year 2016 that we'll be actually starting with a full budget uh, come July 1. And as you can tell, that's what's in the cash balance as of May 18th. As you know, uh, the legislative allocation for our budget is 795,000, just a little over of. You'll see the different categories that it goes into. The 200 category is what I would call administrative overhead. And the three and the 400s are, are for, um, you know, making sure all the law enforcement and education that OHV does uh, is paid for to include the grants that we tend to offer. Uh, let me move this so I can read my slides. Um, as of May 18, we spent about $400,000 of that annual budget. Uh, of course, th since then, you know, salaries have come out of there and we've spent and, and bought some other things to include uh, uh, field operations, our law enforcement. We got them some new ATVs and some uh, uh, dirt motorcycles. Uh, I was able to actually get some registration, resident registration, numbers from MVD, because as we all know, as New Mexicans, we have to go through MVD to get our OHVs registered. And you can see those are two-year registrations. So we have just a little over 55,000 OHVs in the state that get registered um, uh, on a two-year cycle, if you will. Um, and that's just for public use. That's what those registrations are for. It doesn't include all those OHVs that are used for agriculture, ranches, farms, stuff like this. The non-resident registrations that uh, the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish actually oversees gives you an idea of what we sold, what we produce, and get it in the mail to our, our, uh, our non-resident users. Uh, in 2020, we had the uh, two-year registrations. There's just over 1,100 people that purchased those. The 90-day registrations are always highly popular. Uh, usually when someone gets a draw hunt or they have a family reunion and they're only going to come to the state just for a short period of time, uh, those those sh show up a little over 2,200. And the numbers are, are fairly similar to what they were last year. Uh, maybe a transient event, this little blurb with COVID-19, uh, because uh, the people did come out and enjoyed the outdoors uh, during some of the shutdowns. We were able to offer grants this year again, which I was grateful for. Uh, eight applications were received. My staff and I graded those grants. Five grants were awarded. Uh, Namova is having a project down at the Powerhouse Road. 
down there by Glenwood on the Forest Service. Uh, Village of Los Lunas wants to buy an instructional trailer to fit those instructional ATVs that we sent them about a year and a half ago, I guess. Um, so they have a place to store them and, and kind of mimic what we already do for our instructional trailers um, whenever we farmed out those ATVs. Friends of the Sandia, they're wanting to do a big signage project. Uh, Desert Outlaw Racing, uh, they're doing a big program about littering, pack it in, pack it out. Uh, and Red Rock Motorsports, um, who usually gets our grants from time to time, they're wanting to do some pretty good renovations and maintenance uh, to the OHV recreation out there. There were three grants that were rejected. Uh, Bloomfield was one of them. Uh, they wanted to make a single track in the city limits of Bloomfield, uh, particularly just for uh, mountain bikers, the pedal bikers, uh, without not allowing access for maybe some dirt bike riding with the dirt uh, motorcycles. Uh, and then two of the Los Lunas applications uh, were rejected. Nine OHV law enforcement grants were applied for and all nine were awarded. Uh, United States Forest Service, North Zone, Carson National Forest, stuff like that, Kiowa. Uh, then the Hamas and the Sandias, they received three. BLM out in Farmington, Carlsbad, Luna County. And you can read the rest of the list. These are primarily strictly for uh, salaried law enforcement officers that specifically patrol and enforce the OHV laws. And that's the only way this money gets spent or they could tap into it. And you see the different amounts, uh, whatever they want to cover. They also submit a plan on how they're going to patrol, when they're going to patrol. Uh, and uh, Desi does a really good job keeping on top of them. OHV accidents and injury reporting. Um, I have four here that uh, didn't make the list that happened since Memorial Day. So I'll be reading off this slide out here in a minute. But as you can see, February 6, Kara QE uh, said that on Saturday night, West Mesa North of I-40 fire crews responded to an ATV accident where they found a man pinned under an ATV. Man was rushed to the hospital. No other information was given. March 24th, Farmington Glade youth hit by an ATV that was harassing him. Uh, Non-life threatening injuries, but his dirt bike was totaled and he got many bumps and scrapes uh, from that incident. Uh, a very aggressive ATV rider uh, in that incident. April 13th, Kara QE uh, was investigating after a crash kills teen. Albuquerque West Side neighbors want road improvements. 13 year old boy was killed while riding his dirt bike uh, that night at 7 p.m. Uh, there was a, a public release of an accident that Kara QE investigated on June 3rd uh, that it was a AP, uh, ABQ police officer arrested for DWI following an ATV crash, uh, which happened Saturday, May 29th. There was a strong order of alcohol and the officer's wife, I guess, was riding with them was seriously injured. Um, we also received a report from an officer during the Memorial Day weekend out in the Hamas on Forest Road 376 that a side by side rolled over on a straightaway on that dirt road, um, they think it was in excess of 80 miles an hour. Uh, the rider, driver swerved and uh, ended up inevitably rolling the side by side. Uh, they both uh, had had some. They both walked away, but they they felt like the driver may have to have his arm amputated. I guess it was pretty bad. June 9th, there was a two vehicle fail crash on the Roswell, Roswell relief route in Chavez County. Um, that's when it was released June 8th at 5 p.m. Uh, New Mexico State Police is investigating a two vehicle fatal crash involving a commercial motorized vehicle and an ATV. It appears that the ATV uh, forgot to yield to the commercial vehicle. Uh, June 4th, 14th, the press release released that Eddy County, New Mexico, um, on June 12th at about 1.42 p.m., New Mexico police, state police investigated a fatal ATV crash near South 26th Street and West Fairgrounds Road, south of Artesia, New Mexico. A 2016 Honda side-by-side -side entered a curved portion 
of the roadway and rolled it. I uh, wasn't wearing a seat belt. Uh, and unfortunately, this young man was succumbed to his injuries at Artesia General Hospital. Uh, alcohol does not appear to be a factor in that. And I do apologize. I didn't have time to update this slide, uh, but those were the recent ones that we just received. Uh, through our investigation on April 12th, the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission and Max Trade warned consumers to stop using Max Trade Coolsters youth ATVs due to crash hazards and violations of mandatory safety standards. It appears that the ATVs for the youth, uh, the ATV 3050C and ATV 3050B exceed the max speed limitations and other mandatory standard requirements uh, for those, those youth ages. Uh, and it looks like there's about 58,000 of the C models sold and about 4,000 of the B models sold in 2016. It seems they made them way too fast. On the law enforcement front, um, Officer Desi Ortiz has been our go-to person for the whole state. He's been delivering a bunch of our updated law enforcement booklets that we just received. Uh, to the agencies around the states. The, a lot of them have been wanting them for a while and we're fulfilling that order. Uh, he also d delivered a lot of our OHV updated brochures and our posters to the dealerships, OHV dealerships throughout the state, uh, making sure we get the best information into those oh. users' hands. Uh, also, we've been working with uh, BLM uh, at their Bureau of Land Management dam site uh, visit uh, Officer Ortiz did in Rio Reba County for the Soil and Water Conservation Association. And he also uh, uh, provided signage, OHV signage for installation. Uh, they're having a bunch of issues of OHVs uh, taking out some of the dirt dams. Uh, and there's also some flood water concerns uh, for that project. It's still an ongoing project, but on the front end, we were able to pr provide some signage and we're still working with them on on some, uh, uh, maybe a project in the near future. He's also delivered a bunch of our uh, OHV signage, which are these metal signs that either has safety regulations on it um, or uh, prohibitions of OHVs, uh, closed areas, no OHVs beyond this point. Uh, but uh, he provided some to the Santa Fe and the Carson National Forest so they can install some where they need it. He recently provided a whole bunch to uh, Santa Fe and the Pecos, uh, as well as our own officers up in the Pecos and the, the, our officers are getting ready to put some of that signage uh, up the canyon in the Pecos. Um, the Lincoln National Forest, uh, we provided signage down there after uh, Game Commissioner Souls informed of uh, some of the issues that uh, they were having down there. So we got on that right away. Uh, some signage went to Hobbs and Carlsbad uh, for their insulation, for their issues in, in those areas. Uh, it looks like city of Española has passed a pavement ordinance. Uh, there was an explanation, but recently they passed one. They're still uh, away. In fact, uh, if I can, uh, Officer Desi Ortiz, can you give that update? Uh, good thing, uh, Matt, Mr. Chairman. So the city of Española through, I think, three different Zoom meetings uh, kind of conferred with us. They were asking, you know, what's working? What should we implement? Um, what is successful in other cities and, and what is lacking? So uh, Matt attended one of them, I believe the first one, and then I attended uh, the third one. And then uh, a back and forth with their city councilors, just I, they would call me every now and then just to say, okay, we're, we're looking at doing this. You know, what, what do you think? And I would give them, what is standard kind of across with the, with the language and statute. And uh, they would take that, go to their legal kind of back and forth. But right now they unanimously passed it. It's at their legal. They're just getting, making sure everything jives with the, what the law says. And they are also trying to get state transportation commission approval to open a route from the east side of town or from the west side of town to the east side of town. But the problem is all of those bridges 
are either state highways or state roads, and most of them are state highways. So it's going to be probably an uphill battle trying to get those approved through State Transportation Commission. Um, but, you know, they, they, they asked, and I said, I have no authority over that. And I, I got them in contact with State Transportation Commission. And um, right now we're just waiting to hear from them. But the city did pass an ordinance. And once it's approved, I will post it on our website. Thank you, Officer Ortiz. Certainly. Chairman Rook, I'll go and I'm gonna keep on going. Yes, please continue. The, uh, I also asked uh, Chris Johnson and Officer Ortiz to help with the grant review. And then uh, Desi's been busy with grant agreements and finalizations uh, with me, as well as closing out last year grants. Um, so he's also been pretty busy with that. Uh, he's been able to provide some hands-on training during the shutdown. Uh, currently at Air Force Base, uh, he was uh, uh, provided two ROV trainings, which was awesome. And then he was able to give our law enforcement officers, the game wardens, two snowmobile trainings up in the Hopewell area, uh, where there was a pretty good amount of snow. Uh, patrols of note, uh, there was a big event in Southern Boulevard this past year at the Rio Rancho at the end of it. There was something like uh, like two or 3,000 people that attended. There was quite a bit of people out there. Um, there was the Farmington OHV Blade Blitz, Albuquerque Southern Ditch Patrol, and Rio Bravo. And he's also provided trainings to the San Juan uh, Department of Public Safety Academy, San Juan County Sheriff's Office, uh, for their OHV refreshers uh, that they requested. He did a couple of those. And uh, with state police up in the Pecos area for their OHV refreshers. Um, do appreciate all of Desi's efforts during this time and all the time. Moving right along into the OHV program education. Uh, there was 11 hands-on uh, classes that were offered in 2020. Several of them had to be canceled. Six ended up being completed and a handful of students that passed. Um, some of the classes uh, were canceled to agencies at Los Lunas, Deming, Deming Public uh, at Los Lunas. Two OHV classes were, had to be canceled and two of the ROV classes were canceled at Elephant Butte Fire Department and Kirtland Air Force Base. Are we, back are, to, uh, are we back to allowing hands-on training or not no, yet? No, sir, not yet. And that's a directive from above you? Yes, sir. Okay. Calendar year 2020 is our final online training data. I know we've had some issues with some of the online uh, data uh, collections, but uh, we've, we've significantly, significantly increased those numbers uh, which was awesome to see. And I was blown away by how many people took snowmobile courses with uh, 222 of them. Uh, so a good snow year uh, really turns those people out and, and get in the out, uh, out of doors. But those are the uh, fresh air, ASI and Calcami or Calcami uh, are the main vendors that we go through uh, for our online training. And calendar year 2021, hands-on training year to date. Uh, we've offered three, well, one agency ROV class, Village of Los Lunas, uh, the open space guys down there do a phenomenal job. We have an OHV education facility down there uh, and they are probably the number two when it comes to OHV trainings in the state, us being number one. Uh, two agency ROV classes, as already mentioned, a uh, total of, of eight students uh, passed those. For calendar 2021, this is what our numbers are as of, mid of, um, as of April. Um, so we're still having a lot of people come up with the snowmobiles that January, February, March, uh, when the snows were still pretty good up north. Uh, so there's still people doing quite a online training. Um, even those that are seeking to have hands-on training we direct them uh, to our online uh, uh, training courses. Uh, just some, some general information, calendar year 2020 online training told 654 students. Uh, a third of those were snow, snowmobile completions. Kalkamai and Fresh Air merged in 2017. 
but they do continue to do the SEPRA online training products. But they recently have told us that they're going to consolidate uh, their, some of their customer service functions. So we're interested to see how that turns out. Uh, we are currently working on free OHV online training because our providers do charge a fee at the end when you want to print your certification for proof in front of a law enforcement officer. Um, our our uh, OHV coordinator, Christopher Johnson, has ready the first two hours, which is basic OHV information. And then they uh, a student could go into uh, ATV course, which is completed, and they could go to an off-highway motorcycle course, uh, which is currently being worked on. Um, so we're working through our INE division uh, to at least get the uh, general OHV information and ATV completed course on the webpage where our customers can access it. Uh, and it's the same certified training that we provide to anybody, whether it's online or our instructors that uh, we teach. Uh, the education uh, division uh, has been working on a, a massive media campaign and it's been highly successful. Uh, we've had several images sort of sourced from Tread Lightly and, and what we're really doing is, is editing them for our OHV program message. Uh, and we continue to seek more images and access out there uh, because of trademarks and, and licensings that we need to make sure we're in compliance with. Uh, our main message focuses on problem behaviors emerging during the pandemic surge in the OHV recreation realm, paved road use, damage to public lands, lack of safety gear and training. And some of those images I wanted to show you. So sometimes when you go riding out there, you see a pile of shotguns. Um, so do some cleanup after you. Uh, right at home off road is the other picture. A lot of tread lightly stuff, respect the open access. Well, we in integrated that tread lightly into our, our management plan. Uh, some more cleanup stuff. Uh, I love the one on the, on the far right, the Twitter, never heard of it. Uh, that's pretty cool. Kid having fun. And Chairman have much, oh. uh, Matt, have you had uh, much success with uh, cooperation from SVIA and Roba? I will turn that over to Christopher Johnson. He talks to those individuals quite often. Uh, Chairman Elkhorn and members of the board, I uh, made contact with uh, uh, a woman who's the uh, um, communications coordinator for MIC. And she put me into contact with the folks from uh, SVIA. Uh, I've exchanged emails with them. They have not responded back to me yet. I basically just uh, requested permission to use images that they post on their Facebook and other social media as uh, raw materials for uh, these these digital images that we've been producing, um, but I'm still waiting for approval from them uh, to participate. Who was the MIC individual you spoke to or do you know? Uh, her last name is Yu, uh, I believe, Andrea Yu. Okay. Andrea Yu, yeah. Okay, if you have any issues in that regard or they haven't gotten with you shortly, let me know and I might be able to jumpstart that for you. Okay, will do, thank you. Um, Mr. Seidel. Chairman Alcone, uh, this pretty much comes to the end of, of the progress that we've had since our last uh, meeting uh, with you all. Um, I can entertain any questions or we could continue to the next agenda item, Wh whatever you prefer, sir. Uh, first of all, Steve Henry, do you have any questions? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. I have a couple. Um, First and foremost, Desi, how are we doing in keeping the ordinance postings updated on the website? I, I mean, I'm in there a lot daily almost. Um, it looks like everything's staying fairly updated. Um, but are we having uh, good success in getting those that pass the ordinances to communicate with you so you can put them online? Or um, how is that working? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, JAL 
the city of Jowl was our last update. Um, I haven't heard of anything more. I, there was word, kind of a rumor that was going around that uh, Carlsbad had passed something. I reached out to a lieutenant with Carlsbad PD and he said, no, uh, just the same. I <laughs> uh, forget the language he used, but the same people are, are uh, riding in town believing that it's legal. But no, uh, anything that I hear, I, you know, I get on top of and I post and I pass it out to Matt and Chris and then we get it posted. I know every now and then we have a, a glitch. Um, I believe it was either Rio Dosa, no, not Rio Dosa, the city of Roswell. Roswell, uh, yeah. There, yeah, there's kind of, it doesn't pull up every time. So I may have to go in and try to get a, an actual PDF and just put it on there. What we usually do with everything else, but I think theirs was pretty accessible in the beginning. And then as of late, it's kind of hasn't been working as well. Okay. Well, I Terminal. just want to keep, I want to keep encouraging Desi on that because that is probably the single best source for, the consumers to be able to go to a, you know one place to find that information. So it's becoming extremely, extremely valuable. And I appreciate your efforts in that. Uh, Mr. Seidel. Chairman Alcona, I was going to add that on top of what Officer Ortiz was saying, because um, there's much effort, not only myself and Desi, but uh, Christopher Johnson. Anytime we hear about it from whoever, we don't care if it's clubs, fellow officers, uh, wherever we could get the information, we investigate to see if that ordinance is truly passed or not, uh, because it will even get customers saying, well, they passed an ordinance and we investigate and it's like, no, there's not. So we, we put a pretty good effort to make sure that we get it on the web page and we tell our customers the web page for the Department of Game and Fish where these ordinances are not 100% official. This is the last version, last copy we may have received. Make sure you know before you go get with Red River and make sure they haven't changed it uh, because right now it's still word of mouth and they're not. Uh, most people are, uh, you know, whether it's counties or municipalities are inviting us to those tables to let us know that they did pass an ordinance. And Thank are you. we emphasizing that if it doesn't, if you don't see it, it doesn't exist. So a, a, a default by closed or closed by default message. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it's like we tell them is like we haven't heard of it. If it's not on the list, you know, you could definitely call Red River. Uh, kind of put some people off, you know. But at the same time, it's like you you really need to know before you go. Right now, the best I could tell you is there's not one. Um, okay. Whether they want to listen to that or not, that's on them. Yep. Okay. Any other oh questions? Oh, I, did, I had one more for Chris, uh, Chris Johnson. So I'm, I, I hadn't heard about the internal online training um, that you're developing. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? You're doing your own production. You, you're just using the agenda that you would use in the hands-on class. I mean, it's very exciting. That sounds like we're doing that on our own. Uh, yeah, uh, Chairman Halcon, it's uh, basically um, a PowerPoint presentation uh, that's turned into a video by uh, our video, videographer in the department uh, and um, uh, split it into general OHV information. So laws, regs, rules that apply to all kinds of OHVs. And then uh, uh, the uh, prospective student would be able to uh, then choose a particular curriculum path, uh, whether it's getting more information specifically about ATV use or uh, off-highway motorcycle use uh, or uh, uh, eventually uh, snowmobile or uh, recreational off-highway vehicle use side-by-sides. Uh, so uh, right now the uh, uh, general uh, information is put together. It needs some editing still. Uh, I'm working with uh, our videographer to uh, clean that up a little bit. Uh, the ATV portion is done. Uh, there's some other integration that needs to be done uh, they'll, the students will need to be able to uh, take uh, our usual written test, uh, but that written test needs to be in an online form where uh, folks can download the test, fill it out, send it back via email, and then uh, it'll be scored, and then they'll be notified that they've got a passing, passing grade or not passing grade. Do you have a proposed uh, go live date or target date? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. 
you think it's reasonably soon or we're still off in the distance a bit? Uh, right now with the motorcycle curriculum, I'm uh, in a position where I need to take some uh, photos and some video. Uh, I'm using my kids for uh, uh, <laughs> models for the, for the uh, riding exercises. And uh, so once I've got their, their pictures, then uh, putting those into the curriculum is the next step. Okay. Be sure and get a, a signed release from their dad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Very good. Well, I'm glad to hear that project's moving forward. So uh, I think that will be um, a good use. Um, okay. I believe that's all the questions that I had at the moment. Um, next agenda item. Yes, sir. Okay. So we've reached that point in time where we're willing to take public general public comments. Um, Mr. Seidel and or Lance, um, would you suggest, we received, uh, just to everybody involved, we did receive four written comments in advance of the board meeting. Those written comments have been distributed to all the members of the board and the internal staff. Um, would you suggest we read those into the record or just the fact that they were sent to us can be published into the record? How do we need to go about that? Maybe you could educate me a little bit. We can do either or. Um, it's, it's very easy to publish them with the archive. Um, but if, if you want it in the, in the final video archive, um, mm -hmm. then it's best to read them in because then it'll be part of the video. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do with that then. Um, the, if the person who sent me the, sent us the email or the email or the written comment is on with us. Um, that would be uh, Tonya Stinson from Farmington, which I don't think she's on with us. Uh, that would be one of the Seamsters from Santa Fe County. And one of the individuals that sent the letter uh, Mark Allison, first name on that letter, amongst others. Um, if someone from that represents each of those letters would like to read those letters into the record, I will allow that to be done uh, verbatim from the letter. And that, that time will not count against your public comment time. If we reach the end and all of the, com of the written comments have not been read into the record, uh, then I will probably read those in. Okay. Um, and in, I don't know if you have a particular order that you want to work in, Lance, um, but I'll let you kind of co coordinate the flow on the general public comments. Um, for the general public that is with us, I really appreciate you being a part of the board, our board meeting today. Um, I would like to bring you up to speed just a hair on what you're seeing and who you're seeing on this, um, on this call and kind of tell you a little bit or refresh your memory a little bit about the board and our function uh, within this process. So first and foremost, um, when there was an administrative change to the governor's office, uh, this board became, it was not on the front burner it appeared as were several other boards um, that are across the state. Uh, I know it takes time to get those boards um, all refilled and back up to speed. Um, as a result, every member that is a part of the board has had a term that has expired. Um, Mr. Henry and myself and a couple of others on occasion have agreed to continue on until we're booted otherwise or reconfirmed, whichever way that happens to go at the pleasure of the governor as we serve at her, her wishes. Um, and so basically we're operating at this moment and you will not see a whole lot of board members for that reason. Although their names were called at the roll call, that was simply because those were the last known board members for each of the assigned positions um, that were previously filled. I will tell you that the governor's office has reached out to me directly 
and has indicated that they have an interest in um, getting this board back up into its uh, completed position. We look forward to that happening and I will work with them as will um, uh, Mr. Seidel uh, in, in getting, uh, getting the board back up to its full position. Um, I will also remind you that we are simply an advisory board at this point. Um, over the years, we have had a variety of functions and we've been under a couple of different departments. I've been a part of several of those processes and, and not a part of some of those. Um, but in general, at one point in the early days of the OHV advisory board, when, when it was something like 17 or 21 members strong, we had uh, statutory capacity to make rules. Uh, we had a variety of things that we could do um, that would kind of dictate some of the things that could happen within the OHV um, rules and regulations. I will tell you that when the latest round of um, language was created for the OHV Act, that capacity to create rules and regulations was stripped from the board. And so from that moment till now, we, ad we act in an advisory capacity. Um, the, uh, the, the role, the um, meetings are called at the pleasure of the governor's office, the department chair and the program manager, Matt Seidel. Uh, we are asked to uh, have an advisory meeting at least two times a year, and we have done so. Um, and the kinds of things that we've talked about today are the types of things that we talk about. Um, and we will share our opinions with the department, but ultimately it is the department's decision-making authority that will prevail. Is that a fair and accurate summary, Mr. Seidel? Yes, sir, Chairman Alcorn, it is. Okay. So given that, um, also, I'm not a um, absolute dogmatic individual where I'm going to cut you off to the second, but I am going to keep a three-minute timer per speaker because it sounds like we do have um, a bunch of individuals who would like to speak, um, and I would encourage that. Uh, but if you hear my timer go off, it means that you probably should at least respect the time frame and wrap up your comments um, to the next, uh, you know, the next thought process that you can. So at that point, Lance, I'll turn it over to you to kind of coordinate the flow. Hey, Mr. Chair, we will start off with um, Judith Allison. Judith, you have been permitted to talk. Please unmute your mic and you may proceed. Thank you very much. I have a couple of questions. The first one, um, let me direct to uh, Mr. Ortiz. Um, I live in Dalton Canyon, north of Pecos. Uh, there are constant ATV abuses that happen here. And I'd like to know who to contact um, when I observe those or my neighbors observe those. Is it the state police? Is it game and fish? Is it fire service? Um, I've never had anybody respond when I've tried to, to reach out. That's the first question. And uh, my second question is, I saw that there was a $15,000 grant to the Forest Service. It said North. And does that mean the whole Pecos area? And if that's the case, um, who would that be that I would need to contact? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. And to answer your first one, you can contact any of those agencies. So uh, state police, the, the county, the forest service and or game and fish, you know, we're all responsible to enforce the off-highway vehicle act. Um, I, so I would encourage you to, you know, uh, you can start with us. If, if we're not around, I would encourage you to kind of go down the line, um, you know, and, and uh, what, in particular is occurring and I, I don't get in the weeds with it, but um, I mean, you could always call me, but what in general or, or what's happening? What's happening is that people are making new roads in the in, in meadows. Um, they're doing big donuts, 130 feet by 50 feet, right in the middle of a forest service um, meadow. Um, and the question is really, this always happens on the weekends. And so who's available? Um, state police are awfully busy, you know, to come up and deal with something like that. Um, 
how can I reach anybody? Yeah, and, and I, I think we're all in the same boat with the uh, availability, but I, I, I encourage you to, to keep calling. Um, and I, I did give signage to the Forest Service, to Game and Fish in that area to start posting, to let the public know, because you got a, a, a big crop of new riders out there who just aren't as familiar as we'd like them to be with, with the laws and rules. Um, and on your second question, the $15,000 was per forest so we have the santa fe national forest we gave one to the carson national forest and also 15 to the siebel national forest so um they will be receiving it a little after july and uh you know i i know they're actively out there right now i worked a roadblock with them on friday night in the in the hemis area um you know we're all in the same boat with staffing but you know we we try to do what we can with what we got. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I would add, certainly there's two levels of uh, components to that, just, just from a personal experience is there's a, an LEO component. They're actually breaking a law, an immediate law. So any law enforcement officer in the state of New Mexico is commissioned to enforce the OHV Act, their statutory acts. So it can be Game and Fish Department, which has primary responsibility, but it can be state police, it can be county sheriffs. But on a, on a more long-term kind of basis, that's certainly something that would be um, Forest Services, um, Forest Service should be actively involved in that process as you know that's their jurisdictional turf, so to speak, and to create a, a program or a process um, that might allow you to contact them, you know, uh, on a hotline or something like that. But unfortunately, I'm not aware of anything. All right, we'll go ahead and take our next comment. Hey, Mr. Chair, next up is going to be Leslie Allison. Um, Leslie, you've been allowed to talk. Un unmute your mic and you may proceed. Okay, thank you. Can you all hear me? We can. Great, Chairman. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you very much, Chairman and members of the board. Um, my name is Leslie Allison. I'm not related to Mark Allison. I am related to Judy, who just spoke. Um, I'm wearing two hats tonight. One is a personal hat as a lifetime New Mexico resident, hiker, hunter, fisherman. Uh, the other is as executive director of the Western Landowners Alliance. Uh, I've used OHVs extensively myself for ranching and outfitting. I also appreciate the value that OHVs bring. Um, it's uh, it's it's been great to listen this evening to the work you guys are doing to uh, increase enforcement and education. I think my comments are going to be things you already know, but I would like to offer them uh, regardless. Uh, we are experiencing what seems to be just an explosion in OHV use, and unfortunately, with it, a uh, lot of abuse. Um, you know, we're seeing all kinds of destructions from roads and hillsides to creeks. Uh, wildlife are being displaced. Uh, safety is an issue. I personally nearly collided with three small children, including an infant who was being held by a young child in the front of an ATV without an adult at high speed on a blind corner. Um, our landowners in my organization are experiencing trespass, cut fences, and a whole lot more. Uh, they often consider OHVs the highest concern, uh, second only right now to the drought. Um, but we really out in the field are just not hearing very much in the area of education. I know you guys are working at it. I know you have limited resources. Um, and personally, I've never seen any kind of enforcement uh, out there. Um, and so I guess the question really is, you know, what can we do to help scale up your efforts? Um, are there ways we can increase penalties for violations? Uh, can we get the industry to contribute more to support responsible riding and enforcement? Um, you know, and how can we put some pressure on the U.S. Forest Service to do more travel management? And of course, I'm fully aware that their budget is just as constrained as everybody else's, but it's gotten to a point of, catastrophe in some cases in our, in, our, in our woods and for our wildlife and certainly for our own public enjoyment. Um, so I just wanted to, to say all that and thank you for letting me speak tonight. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think we can, I, I think I can address a few of those uh, questions and concerns. I think they are questions and concerns that we all have. Um, there's certainly questions and concerns that really worked to develop the OHV Act from the very, very beginning. 
And certainly the modification of the act in its final version uh, was definitively addressing some of those issues. I think there's been a convergence of a few things that have happened um, that you know, I'd like to share and, and it's not an excuse and I, and I hope we can deal with it going forward. But, but two things happened. One is the OHV um, Trail Safety Fund, which is created specifically from a $30 fee that's charged to every OHV that's registered in the state of New Mexico. Um, through a variety of times of this board has maybe not been spent or the um, programs haven't been, been developed as quickly or as rapidly as we have, anybody would have liked to have seen. Some of that's uh, LFC confinements and, and restrictions. But in recent years, the biggest issue is that we, the fund has been raided. It, it was, has been attacked on a couple of occasions and basically stripped down. I think at the very beginning of this presentation, uh, Mr. Seidel led, um, gave a little bit of, of indication that this is the first year that in the, in the recent years that we're actually going into our next fiscal year fully funded. Um, that's disappointing. And, and while it's disappointing in that we haven't been able to provide some of the community outreach things and grants that we think should be out there and are already on the ground and that are demonstrated by our current grants as they've been um, distributed this last year, for example. Um, two things happened. A, we ran out of money because it was stolen from us. And I'll use that word pretty liberally that it was, it was stolen from us. And at the same time, the industry with the COVID scenario took off. And there was very, very little things people could do. Um, they couldn't travel out of the state. They couldn't go on vacation. They were forced to stay at home. Everybody knows all those issues. And one of the things that became available to people is outdoor recreation. And that's not, not just limited to the power sports, you know, product segment, OHV segment, but it's boats, it's RVs, it's bicycles, it's everything. It's even just general camping. And I'm not speaking, you know, for the, in, the agencies in this regard, but basically there was an explosion that nobody saw coming. And we were a little bit behind the eight ball because of the funds that had been diminished from or had been taken from us. So hopefully the good news about the explosion of, of units is that it has rapidly replenished the fund. The bad news is they're get, the users are getting out there ahead of the enforcement, the signage, and some of the other things that uh, we would certainly like to have in place. Um, so I kind of just leave it at that. We recognize that. Um, I think the department is aggressively working and looking at things to do that would um, deal with those issues. So I think that may address some of the future comments, but, but I just wanted to share that with you for the moment. So I'll take the next comment. Mr. Chair, next up is Garrett Vinniclausen. Okay, Garrett. Good evening and welcome. You'll need to unmute your mic, Garrett. I'll put him on hold while he figures out his mic and we'll move to the next one, which is um, Roger Pattison. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead. Hello, Roger. Roger. Good evening. Thank you Welcome. for the- Thanks. Thanks for joining thank us. The, thank you for the time to speak. I hope everyone has had a chance to at least glance at the, uh, the proposal that was, that was set in. Uh, if not, please give it a chance to study it. And I would ask for the subject to be agendized in the future meeting. And the subject is um, outdoor recreation is clearly uh, getting a lot of attention in New Mexico as it should. Many of us believe that off-highway vehicles contribute 
a considerable amount, a large percentage, 30 to 50 percent of the economy of outdoor recreation is, is in some way attributable to off-highway vehicle recreation. And we'd like to see uh, a bona fide study done to validate that and then use the results for the purpose of, of better supporting and better understanding the this, this sport of off-highway vehicle recreation and how it can integrate with other outdoor recreational uses of New Mexico, area in New Mexico. And I think that it'll help us all if we understand the numbers a little better. The proposal that I forwarded was made to this commission in uh, 2015 and, and not uh, acted upon. It's the proposal came from NUMOVA I'm a member and active part of NEMOVA, but I'm not making this presentation as a formal representative of that entity, uh, but as a, uh, an off-highway vehicle enthusiast in New Mexico and an advocacy, advocacy participant. We've formed a subset of NEMOVA in uh, the northern part of the state, Enchanted Circle off-highway. And uh, there are other satellite organizations that have started because of New Mexico OHV Alliance, NUMOVA. Uh, thank you for your consideration. I'd like to see this as an agenda item to be further discussed in earnest. And I believe that the money should be available through the fully funded uh, OHV coffers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Roger. Um, so for the benefit of those that uh, are on the call or on the, on the webinar, um, Roger has forwarded to the board um, some studies that have been done in other surrounding states. Um, he's suggesting that it would be valuable information uh, now and into the future as to the economic impact of OHVs um, on the state of New Mexico's economy. Um, uh, Mr. Seidel, this was presented to the board in 2015, and I believe even one time prior to that, but the presentation Roger's referring to is 2015. It, it strikes me, and I, I haven't had a chance to research this, but it strikes me we did go down the path of getting some information, or at least proposing, sending out some bids for or an RFQ for this, is that correct or am I mistaken there? Have we acted on this before? Chairman Alcone, yeah, it was investigated. It was a year before I actually got on as a program manager, but whenever I investigated, I was talking to New Mexico State. Uh, they were saying that uh, just a very basic uh, uh, study like this would run from 75 to $80,000, but the price tag of that goes up as depending on what you wanted to do. Um, so at that time, um, our funds were also being rated uh, quite ex extensively from uh, uh, fiscal year uh, 2015 through fiscal year uh, 2017. Um, so it, it's something that we've looked into, uh, but unfortunately our ha hands ended up getting tied because there was some fiscal years that we barely started with $240,000. Okay. All right, we will uh, examine the possibility of, uh, of agendizing that in the future. All right, next comment. Next up is Nathan Ortiz. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Nathan. <clears throat> good evening. Uh, good evening, Commissioner and, uh, and uh, Des Officer Desi Ortiz. Uh, my name is Nathan Ortiz. I am from the Espanola Valley. Um, I want to thank Desi for all the uh, assistance he's given us to try to uh, get this ordinance passed in all the language that we've used. Um, we're saying that um, we as a community of uh, OHV writers um, really think education is extremely important. Um, coming up July 10th, uh, I've spoke with Desi, I've spoke with the U.S. Uh, Forest uh, Law Enforcement, BLM Law Enforcement, uh, New Mexico State Police, Espanola, EPD, and we are going to uh, do an outreach, a public outreach, uh, July 10th, to try to get the word out to UTV 
uh, OHV users for safety. Um, I think uh, the education that you guys provide is excellent. I think everybody needs to do it, not to abuse our public lands, uh, not to injure themselves, uh, accidents and that type of thing. Um, with that being said, uh, I just wanna thank you guys all for the time and effort you take to uh, allow this for our residents and other people that are coming to visit. Um, there is lots of grants. I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but I am looking into grants that are come through Yamaha, Polaris, and Can-Am for grants to help the state and communities uh, better their uh, trails, uh, cleanups, a lot of cleanups in our public lands. And, um, you know, uh, you will be hearing from me quite a bit more on this committee to see if I can get your blessings and uh, continue forward to help you guys with your endeavors. Uh, I commend you all for uh, doing this. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, just real quickly, so you mentioned July 10th and some UTV OHV, is that a function, an event? Is it something you're planning or is it just a, a loose get together? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Or did we lose him? I, I, I dropped him. Are you, uh, uh, Desi, are you aware of what he's doing? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, I am. Uh, so we were invited. <clears throat> the city of Española, like I stated earlier, was going to put out a pavement ordinance. This group wanted to get together and, and see if we could get ahead of what's coming. Um, I don't want to call it a storm, but, you know, what's coming with, with the... Uh, <laughs> with the pavement enactment. Um, so we're going to get together. I believe we will meet at the Lowe's in Española. And uh, really, it's going to be a, you know, meet and greet with all the entities involved with who are involved or who, uh, who enforce the law. They're going to have an education component with the Forest Service and BLM will be there. State police, like you said, city of Española. Uh, the county will be there. I know the county is actively working on a pavement ordinance for Rio Reba as well. So uh, we're going to get all the, the 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 entities involved and, and try to let everybody know we're on the same page and answer any questions that come up. Um, I know some of those other agencies are going to give out some uh, educational materials. I don't know exactly what those are. I will be there with anything OHV, uh, with our pamphlets, with I mean, I know we have a, a variety of things that we can give out with our message. I'll have signs displayed, you know, pavement, no OHPs beyond this point. That way the public knows when they see it, this is exactly what they mean. And I can be there to explain it. So it's a static display type event at Lowe's. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, correct. So it's, it's, this part will be static, but I know there's going to be roving uh, law enforcement around town. If okay. they make contact with if they make contact with the side by sides, then they'll educate him to what's coming. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for participating in that. You're okay. Thank you. Next comment. And next up will be Garrett Vinaclausen. Hello, Garrett. Can you, you hear me? This? Can you hear me this time? We, we can hear you now, sir. How okay, are you? Great. Thanks. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Garrett Vinaclausen with. Uh, New Mexico Wild. I'm also uh, a longtime OHV, OHV user. I have an ATV and use it quite a bit on public lands. Um, I just wanted to read a letter that our organization and several others have submitted, um, if that's okay, Mr. Chairman. Is this the letter dated June 7th? It is, yes. Okay, I'll pause your time as I indicated earlier and so you can read that, that letter into the record. Great, thanks. And uh, this was um, addressed to you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes. Uh, over the last several years, the incident of illegal off-highway vehicle misuse has increased exponential threat, exponentially throughout New Mexico. Our members and the members of other like-minded conservation and environmental organizations are reporting increased illegal off-trail activity by OHVs in virtually every national forest and BLM region statewide. As you know, illegal OHV activity fragments critical wildlife habitat increases wildfire threat, exacerbates erosion, 
greatly impacts watershed functionality. Unfettered OHV activity increases in an area the quality of hunting and wildlife viewing opportunity greatly decreases. And outdoor recreationists, recreationists seeking a quiet, non-motorized backcountry experience are finding it harder and harder to find areas not overrun by illegal OHV activity. With this in mind, we encourage the New Mexico Game and Fish OHV Advisory Board and the New Mexico Game and Fish Commission to do the following. One, implement an ambitious statewide outreach and education campaign targeting OHV users and OHV organizations. Two, coordinate a statewide collaborative enforcement action plan involving the Game and Fish, Forest Service, BLM, state land office, sheriffs, and state police. Three, utilize OHV trail fund dollars to increase signage, information kiosks, uh, trailhead carsonite signage, build new gates, and barrier structures and decommission um, and restore illegal routes. And number four, advise the Game, Game, Game and Fish Commission to consider stronger rulemaking, um, sorry, my phone rang, um, stronger rulemaking to punish egregious illegal OHV infractions. Your considerations on this matter, your consideration on this matter is greatly appreciated. We look forward to seeing the New Mexico OHV Advisory Board and the Game and Fish Commission act decisively on this issue. And I, I just wanna note, I spend a ton of time out in the field, uh, Unit 5249, White Peak, uh, down in the Gila, uh, Caja del Rio, um, Rio Grande del Norte National Monument. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go, I am seeing uh, really, really bad behavior everywhere in the state. It is, uh, it is a huge and horrible problem. And uh, I really, really, I think you all take this very seriously. Um, the destruction that it's causing is massive and uh, we really got to get a, a handle on it. So I really appreciate your time and consideration on this as to the organizations and members that signed on to this letter. Okay. Thank you, Garrett. Appreciate your participation. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this point, I think we might have more comments on this. So I'm gonna leave the, my comments on it for the moment. And uh, I, may, I may comment on it later. Anybody else have any comments at this point? Okay, uh, we'll take the next one, Lance. Lance, you're muted. Can you hear me? Now we can. It. Yes, sir. Okay, this is uh, Jason Duran. I'm with the Village of Los Lunas, uh, Parks and Rec Director. And uh, Commissioner and uh, Chairman, thanks for um, letting me speak. Um, I just want to say, uh, you know, we've been uh, working with uh, Matt, uh, Chris, and, um, and Desi for uh, quite, quite some time now. And they have uh, um, been a joy to work with. Uh, we've gotten, uh, I don't know how much money from uh, the Game of Fish, and we've been able to do some great things. Uh, we were the first site, I believe, in New Mexico to have a training site at our river park. And um, Pat, uh, my open space uh, um, supervisor, um, can give you the official numbers, but I think we've probably trained uh, the most uh, uh, riders in the state um, at our site. And uh, it has helped us immensely um, with all the money that we've gotten to, to make that site and uh, all the additional enforcement we've been able to do. Um, in Los Sunas, riders that uh, have been there um, understand, uh, you know, when you're in Los Sunas, you know, don't bring your, don't bring your uh, OHV around uh, in certain areas in our parks and whatnot. Now, that's not to say that we don't still have an issue because, you know, there are still those individuals that uh, don't, uh, uh, that still do ride. But uh, the education piece is, an, uh, is a, a piece that does immensely help. Um, you know, I've heard the comments already. And, uh, you know, the money that uh, is available, uh, if it was to be, you know, I, I think you have heard that there is some possibility of some cuts. Uh, the amount of money that's there now, um, if there was any cuts, I think there's a benefit from multiple municipalities if they would apply for this money, um, that the educational piece would be a huge benefit for them. Um, I, I think there's one other place that I was told that is creating a, a, a training site for that. So I, I know education is a huge piece that I'm hearing right now. Um, COVID, of course, was a, was a big, uh, uh, um, it hurt, hurt us immensely because of the increase um, when it came to uh, in, uh, enforcement. But I think uh, uh, what we also have to look at is, 
you know, those people that bought those are also going to be selling those to people that aren't aware of uh, because they're going to start doing other things again now that we're reopening. So they're going to start signing with people that have no clue how to operate those. So it's getting to that educational piece and, and making sure that we're ahead of the game. I think uh, with the way the world is, is uh, being proactive is going to be a must. Uh, we know how the world is, is evolving and uh, that proactiveness, rather than be reactive is, is, uh, is a must. So um, I could go on and on. Um, I just want to thank, uh, thank you guys for all the assistance that you've been giving us and continue to. Um, you know, uh, my uh, council, mayor and council uh, support us in every way that they can. Um, you know, our budgets are limited just like everybody else's. So any support that we can get um, is truly appreciated. So thank you. All right. Thank you for participating, Jason. Um, we do appreciate as a part of the board um, the the partnership that we've developed with you. Uh, I know the game department really appreciates um, the training that you've done, um, the facility you've created to educate the people of your community. Um, I hope we can see that as a win. Uh, certainly something we would like to replicate in other parts of the state. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's something that could be very, very valuable. I think you're seeing the value of, the, of that come to fruition as um, your program matures. So we appreciate your effort and those uh, safety after efforts. All right, next, Lance. Next up is Drew Garcia. Drew, please unmute your mic. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, I, uh, first of all, I wanna thank uh, all your guys' efforts. It's been outstanding this last year. Um, I'm here to speak, uh, first of all, for Outlaw Desert Racing. We are a nonprofit organization for veterans and first responders with PTSD or suicide issues. Uh, we take those members out to the end of Southern Boulevard or um, in Farmington, or if they want to offer a race in the Baja 1000 or Mint 400, uh, we will facilitate the race cars or UTVs for that uh, for them for just uh, one day of uh, happiness to get them away from, uh, you know, uh, issues that they're going through. Um, second of all, I'd like to just thank um, uh, Game of Fish for awarding us uh, one of the grants. I don't know if you could put me online. I do have a picture of the bags that we are, uh, that we have, um, that they're making right now. Uh, we have 1,250 uh, trash bags that are printed with New Mexico Game and Fish logos and uh, New Mexico OHV funds at work with the Outlaw Desert Racing and, um, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, <clears throat> Red Rock Motorsports uh, logos on those bags. I don't know if you can put a picture of that, sir. Uh, Lance, Terry, I don't know if you can see that, sir. Um, give me just a second here. I think I can- Go ahead and continue it. on, Drew, and if you see it pop up, that'll be great. It's, um, you have any other comments, Drew? Ever lose Drew? Just just momentarily, but he's back in yeah. here. So, All right. Drew, if you, you turn, turn you on, you can your keep commenting. You can do this, and you can keep commenting, Drew, and that that image will come up if it's available. Okay, no problem. Um, I apologize for that, but these are the bags. I don't know if you can see there. They have the logos. Um, they are a two foot bag uh, by twenty seven inches. And uh, these are designed for to haul it in, haul it out, pack it in, pack it out, trash to put on the back of TVs and OHV vehicles, rock crawlers, ATVs. Um, so we are giving these out uh, to free to the public. Uh, and also we have been doing a great job going to all the events around New Mexico. We're trying to hit and facilitate for every single one that we can. Um, where we're giving a lot of information out to the public. Uh, Desi has been helping us, and I apologize, Desi, because I'm hitting you up about every three weeks for uh, more uh, uh, pack, uh, backpacks and coloring books and OHV education material to give out to the public. Um, we'll also uh, be at the big Father's Day car show this weekend in Edgewood, um, so please come stop by. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, and it's really important that we keep this education and funding uh, for safety, uh, you know, available. There is an outburst of OHVs. Um, we're really focused on the end of Southern and Rio Rancho. 
Uh, we there was an event out there. It was not by Outlaw Desert Racing, but there was over 300 UTVs at that event. And uh, Game and Fish was in full force with other local law enforcement agencies. I believe there was no injuries there and everybody, uh, you know, they, they cleaned up after themselves and they had a dumpster on site. So that was a well done job. And I just want to thank everybody for that. But it is very important that we keep funding for that area. And we're just seeing more and more off-roaders out there at the end of Southern. And we wanted to uh, discuss or try to uh, bring to your attention about maybe possibly purchasing the property at the end of Southern and what it would take for that. So um, that would be probably for future conversations, but it's definitely something to be very important for the future of off-roading and to also have a designated off-road area in New Mexico. Thank you very much. All right, Drew, thank you. A um, Couple quick comments for Drew. Um, you mentioned uh, Des Desi's providing some coloring books or something like that. Is that correct, Desi? Or is that misspeak? Mr. Chairman, that's correct. We, we uh, received coloring books from, Chris, help me out. Ro Rova with the no, little four that. packs. These are, these are from Novak. Novak. Oh, Novak, Novak right. yes. Yeah, okay, they're part yes. of okay. educational yeah. outreach. I just wanted to make sure yeah. that that's where you were getting them from because they provide those to you at no charge, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. That's okay. correct, sir. That's okay. correct. We do, we do pay shipping on those, but we don't pay any fees for the actual material themselves. Okay, very good. Yeah, just wanted to make sure of that. And then I just encourage Drew, I know that they're giving out the trash bags. Um, I, his crew does do some cleanup activities. And so I would encourage his crew to continue to uh, do the good events that they do. And that is actually use the trash bags um, with an event um, or in coordination of an event um and we appreciate the effort that drew and his um his group provide all right next next up is pat Hadamio. pat go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead and proceed all right can you guys hear me we can welcome okay well thank you thank you commissioner elcone and the board um again i uh pat Hadamio with the village of las unas open space uh, again, uh, we're the ones that kind of help to uh, put the and run the OHV uh, training um, and the site uh, down here in Las Unas. Uh, Jason Duran, our boss, had just spoke earlier. And honestly, I mean, I, I really don't know what to say after he talked. <laughs> he pretty much hit most everything uh, uh, that we were looking at. Uh, again, my personal thanks, and I, and I, I try my best to do it. Uh, thank Chris and Matt and Desi all the time um, and the Game and Fish exactly uh, like Jason said for what they have done uh, for the village of Las Unas. And, and I say village of Las Unas and really I mean um, not just the village but the county but also the state. Um, over the years that I've been doing these OHB uh, trainings um, we've actually had people from other parts of the state come down to our site and take the training. Um, I've had them as far south as Las Cruces and in Gallup and up north, of course, Santa Fe areas. And I think I even had an individual from Pecos and uh, nobody really uh, east of, of the state, but for the most part, they've uh, come from all over the state. So um, again, I, I think, you know, our facility is, is not only been for you know, Las Unas in Valencia County, but also for the state. And as far as I know, it'll continue to be that way. Uh, so anybody that that's, wants to take a class and is willing to come down, uh, we're here. And again, unfortunately, because of COVID, we haven't been able to give as many classes. We've tried, and then we've had some, some possible exposures. So we've had to cancel just out of pure safety and of course, nothing happened, but again, we were we, we were trying to, you know, keep pushing with that because again, that to us, that is an important aspect um, that the funds from the OHV uh, uh, money that is collected through the through the registrations goes towards. Um, and again, we I believe it's very important that you know, hey, Commissioner uh, Alkin, I, I heard your comment about 
the being stolen uh, funds. And I, and I agree with you. Uh, and that's literally what it was, what was done is the fault. The funds were stolen from the, from the fund. And I, I just agree with what had happened back in the past, but again, that's in the past and hopefully that doesn't happen in the future. And I would encourage the board to, to fight to, you know, again, you guys can only do so much, but to not allow that to happen because again, I, I do believe those funds are very important towards, you know, education and also towards the law enforcement side. Cause we, we do get that funding as well to help to uh, educate individuals, the OHV writers and stuff um, within our community. Uh, so we do our best to do our part, but unfortunately um, it, it, there's just a lot of it going on. Like everybody has said already. Um, so one thing I would say that, and I've mentioned this before, one of the comments I hear from people is I don't think they're being educated as well from the DMV um, because the first thing they say is that DMV says, well, all I got to do is purchase this tag and I can ride it on a roadway. Um, and I get that comment a lot. And of course my comment is to them, well then whoever told you that, bring them into court uh, as I give you this citation. Um, <laughs> and they can, you know, sit there and, and, you know, try and explain the law as they think they know it. Um, so again, I just wanted to, to just put in my two cents real quick. Uh, again, I appreciate the board and, and all that you guys have done. And, and I wish you uh, would get your guys' power back that, that you might have lost some of that power. I think you said earlier um, to help make a lot of these decisions with Matt and the Game and Fish. So again, uh, thanks again. And I appreciate all that you all do for us. All right, Mr. Hermia, thank you very much for your comments. And um, we don't need a power grab. Oh, we, uh, the OHV program is working really well with the advisory committee. And so, um, you know, they, they do take our comments very seriously and we're appreciative of that. Okay. Um, Okay, we'll move on to the next uh, get up. next comment. Get up, get up and go. Um, uh, we have somebody unmuted that might not want to be <laughs> member of the public. Oh, Desi, yeah, yeah, yep, got it. Hey, kid, it's okay. kids. That's all good. <laughs> My next son just decided is, to fall. So, uh oh. Okay. Next up is uh, Carol Johnson. Carol, unmute yourself. Short, short comment is that I see this as a huge problem and very little is being done. That's not the fault of you guys. It's in the whole state. All the things that you've done so far have had n little impact. It's like dusting a table when the whole house is dirty. I think we need better education, more education, required education, more required education and enforcement. The enforcement issue is huge. Without that, you guys will never be successful. That's all. Okay, thank you, Carol. Appreciate your comments and your participation tonight. Lance, next. Mr. Chair, that looks like it. That's it. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna read two two letters that didn't get read into the record. Um, in fairness to those that did send them in. I appreciate the time and effort they took to communicate with us. The first letter comes from Tom and Teresa Seamster. They're Santa Fe County residents. Um, their letter reads to the New Mexico Off-Highway Vehicle Council, before the New Mexico Game and Fish was given the task of managing off-road vehicle use, recreational OHV riding was an unlicensed hazardous and often obnoxious activity uh, in many communities. In our small rural neighborhood next to Santa Fe National Forest and across from the highway, for more densely populated areas, young unattended OHV riders would arrive in groups every Saturday morning to race around our dirt roads and down dry arroyos and cut through the properties. After some children and wildlife were injured, we put up no OHV private road signage and a checkpoint where we photographed riders and contacted their parents with suggestions that they form an organized group and find some safer, more acceptable place to ride. The formation of the 
uh, DGF, OHV department, brought many significant changes to the vehicle licensing, trail safety funding, training courses, safety gear requirements, well-planned recreational areas for OHV riding statewide. There have been some recent calls by public and wildlife conservation organizations to do more to address the impacts of OHV riding and in New Mexico and to allocate funding in the OHV department at the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish in order to provide more education and outreach to New Mexico off-highway vehicle riders and to the out-of-state public about prevention of environmental damage from OHV activities. More law enforcement to prevent user-created trails and destructive freewheeling and decommissioning of some OHV tracks, especially in Eritrean areas, sensitive cultural landscapes and wildlife habitats. We agree with these requests and feel the OHV department should receive more staff, greater funding, and a continued expanding uh, expansion in the ongoing changes of the current OHV program as it's been able to achieve for the public good. The tread lightly management goals were well phrased. Tread lightly department encourages responsible use of our public lands, use that leaves the land healthy and unspoiled, that protects our traditional uses, custom culture, wildlife, wildlife habitat, and allows for continued enjoyment of these lands for our families and for future generations. Please be considerate of other users of our lands, include ranchers, their livestock, wildlife, equestrians, hikers, and mountain bikers. Use the proper equipment that will keep you and your children as safe as possible when riding. Please accept and obey the laws and rules that are put into place to protect the New Mexico's precious land uh, people and preserve the customs and culture that are deeply woven into our state. However, words require personal and funding personnel and funding to successfully achieve these goals and expanding the OHV department and involving groups and communities affected by OHV riders is needed to address concerns when tread lightly is not respected. Thank you, Tom and Teresa Seamster. All right, um, I would also encourage you Lance to include that in the written record um, as, as are the other items that have been submitted. Lastly, I'm gonna read into the record um, a letter from Farmington. This is from Tonya Stinson. Um, she is the executive director of Farmington Convention and Visitors Bureau, Farmington San Juan County Liaison to the New Mexico Film Office, uh, and her letterhead is Farmington Convention and Visitors Bureau. It says, Matt, I was notified this morning about tonight's meeting, uh, but unfortunately cannot participate due to another commitment. I don't know if you allow written comments, but I thought I would send you a note just in case. The Farmington Convention and Visitors Bureau is a non-profit designation uh, marketing organization contracted by the city of Farmington to handle tourism and marketing promotion. Over the years, the uh, FCVB has worked hard to build up outdoor recreation initiative and develop productive relationships with a variety of local nonprofits and entities such as the city of Farmington, San Juan County, BLM Farmington Field Office, field office user groups, groups such as Cliffhangers Four Wheel Drive uh, and through a cross, co cross collaboration the tourism industry, industry in Farmington is a, is a growing one and one of the best gyms in our state as the Glade Run Recreation Area. With trail development, trail signage, organized cleanups, and the addition of Brown Springs Campground, the visitor experience has been greatly enhanced. Projects such as these are possible, aren't possible without funding, um, such as the OHV Fund. We're excited about the future possibility of these projects. Farmington is earning a great reputation with off-roading enthusiasts. Not only are our trails fantastic, but our community is welcoming. We have been fortunate to host um, a variety of events that she lists. After not being able to hold either of these, any of these events last year, um, we're gearing up to kick those uh, events off in a jolt-worthy way this year. Um, these are tourism-driven events that bring visitors into town for multiple night stays, and they are visitors that return on their own to ride the trails again. Thank you for support of OHV efforts in the Farmington area. Okay, so I'll comment on uh, some of those and uh, a few of the comments that I did not um, uh, comment on, um, but I think they can be generalized in a, in a variety of ways. Generally speaking, I think all of us that are involved in the responsible use of OHV products in the state of New Mexico and really throughout the country are concerned, whether we're in the industry, whether we're non-motorized users, we all have concerns about the proliferation of the products and their use on the trails. I agree with many of the comments that um, education is valuable, it's indispensable, and it's necessary. Um, I also agree with um, things like signage, um, with uh, many of the things 
that uh, the Department of Game and Fish has set into motion in, in just the last few years. Quite frankly, I believe um, under our current um, organizational structure, the Department of Game and Fish has taken this more seriously than any other organization, uh, any other entity um, since the creation of this process. Um, for that, we can see some small inroads. Um, I do agree with Carol Johnson that this is a big problem. It's a really big problem. It's a little impact um, with some of the stuff that we're doing. But in order to build on one thing at a time, we got to start with one thing at a time. And the failure to launch has been a problem at this um, entity and this, um, and this um, organization kind of from the beginning. I think you can see that from the comments of um, some of the villages that have participated on this call um, from Farmington and others, that where we've been able to uh, allocate some of our limited resources, there has been an Im impact. Would we like for it to be a bigger impact? Absolutely. We look forward to making that happen. Um, we look forward to try and collaborate with a variety of other uh, influencers in the, in the marketplace, whether that is landowners, uh, by landowners, I mean both public and private, um, with the industry through grants, um, some of which were mentioned by Yamaha, Polaris, can -Am, and others. Um, there are funds out there to be able to do some of these things. First and foremost, we need people who can spearhead some of these projects. First and foremost, we need some people that can bring these requests to this program in an organized fashion with a legitimate plan of action. We have done a good job of revitalizing our grant process. Um, we are looking for more grant applicants. We would like to have a bigger pool of grant applicants to be able to choose from and to also justify um, our actions to LFC so that they can all allocate more of our fund to this part of the process. Um, we can't allocate grants because of a lack of funding sometimes when we have a rich bank account. That's a disgrace. That is, that's a travesty. Um, we should be using every one of those funds every year in whatever way we can to get this message out um, to act and ride and participate in this very fun and enjoyable sport recreate in, in a responsible and conservation-like manner. So we need everybody's help. Give us a real plan. Give us a real opportunity to help create a, uh, we can't solve the entire process in one bite, but we can solve potentially an area, a problem, a timing issue um, in, in one way or another, one bite at a time. Um, help us so that we can partner our funds and leverage our funds with nonprofits. I know Drew's group and some other nonprofit groups have really leveraged their funds with our funds to create a, a very viable project. I think the Glade, the Brown Springs area, and the, and the whole program that's happened in the Farmington area is an exemplary um, process that's been a collaboration of the city, the federal government, the state government, the industry, and the users. And I think that the users respect that area up more as a result. Um, and I think there's only good things that can happen from that. We look forward to more of those projects happening. Um, so keep the comments coming uh, with what limited ability we have. We'll continue to move forward. We'll try to utilize the funds in the best way possible to create a proper stewardship of what's going on. The last thing that I'm gonna make a comment on is that outdoor recreation as a whole faces a challenge um, in, the, in the immediate future and certainly in the, in the coming years. We are seeing probably more first, what I would call first generation users in the outdoor space than we have seen at any one time in a long time. And what I mean by that is this, when you're a hunter and you grow up in a hunting family, you, from the time you can walk, get instruction from your great grandfather, from your grandfather, from your father, in how to properly handle your weapon, in order to how to properly handle yourself when you're out in the outdoor environment, how to properly handle yourself around the campfire, 
um, in the evenings when you're having a great time with your family and friends. And certainly in the way that you go about uh, stocking your animals and, and participating in outdoor activities, there is no level of education that we can replicate in the public space that will duplicate that. But we can try. We can encourage those uh, members of our community who, who take an active interest in this to share with first generational users. Maybe they don't understand. Maybe they don't understand that you can't just go everywhere. Maybe they don't understand they need to stay on the trail because nobody's ever told them. And certainly in the public space, we can do that the best that we can, but with the limited amount of resources that we have, we're never gonna accomplish that without the entire community coming together and educating these individuals one at a time and not in a way that creates a confrontational kind of issue, but in a way that creates a collaborative kind of issue um, with an explanation of why it is that we wanna protect our resources. Um, with that, I think we'll end the comments, uh, unless there's any other comments that have come in late. Lance, are we good? Um, we, we do have one request from Frank King asking if he could introduce himself. Um, yes, quickly, please. Go ahead, Frank. Hi, my name is uh, Frank Keen, and I'm the administrator of a Polaris RGR Internet Forum. Um, 116,000 members worldwide, uh, resident of New Mexico for 30 some odd years, uh, passionate about the off-road community, uh, recently purchased and developed some land out at the end of Southern to uh, develop uh, staging areas and training areas to teach people you know, how to ride these machines. Uh, look forward to working closely with Desi. That big sign that you see on the side of Southern, a pack it in and pack it out is from us. I'm also a Polaris partner. I have been for 10 years, looking forward to getting Polaris involved in helping fund some of these other projects that we're doing. I'm also a consultant for a company called Nikola, who's making a, an electric off-road vehicle, which we will see more of in the near future as well. But the, uh, the, uh, the need for you know, responsible use of these machines is incredible. And, and my goal is to try and get more of the, the manufacturers to get involved in a, in a how to use machine type program when they buy them. Uh, the biggest problem we have is you know, uh, mom and dad go down to the local store and buy one for their son. There's no training. He goes out and drives through three fences and destroys some people's land and doesn't know any better. Um, no excuses to that, but uh, with, the, with the volume that's happening and the, and the amount of these machines that are being sold, uh, you know, Polaris uh, 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 income was up $481 million this year. Um, they're my friends, so I think that they may have some, uh, some input and some money that we could use here locally to develop this um, and, and to go forward uh, uh, so that we don't see some of the events like we saw at Southern and we don't see, uh, there was a, a, a damaging event up at Ojo Caliente uh, where a group, a couple of groups did a bunch of damage to a meadow. And, and I went up there and apologized to everybody and raised uh, $40,000 and, and fixed the meadow and so on and so forth. Um, so my goal is to show that there are more responsible people you know, willing to help and be involved in this sport than there are bad actors. And right now, all the bad actors are the only ones that are getting the attention. So hence, my investment in buying the land out there and developing what we call Razorville at the end of Southern and invite people to come and, and learn how to responsibly use these machines. So I just want to say hello and let Desi know I've got some resources I'm willing to uh, put in your direction and help in any way I can. Awesome. Thank you for jumping in and appreciate your comments. Okay, with that, uh, Lance, I believe we're gonna go ahead and cut it off um, for tonight. Again, for those that still remain on the car, uh, call, I really do appreciate everybody's public comment. I think we all have a lot of common goals, probably more commonality than we do have um, opposition with each other. And so hopefully we can all collaborate together and make, uh, make this a great responsible recreational activity. All right. Um, Next advisory board meeting. I'll defer to Mr. Seidel if you have a if you have a suggestion. Well, uh, can you guys hear me? We can. Chairman Alcon, if you like, uh, we can uh, establish dates later via email. Uh, I'm kind of looking at October, maybe beginning of November, but I could send some to the 
the board at that time and we could uh, show up those dates and make sure we advertise appropriately so everyone can attend. Sure. Just uh, do the email chain like you've done before and um, that'll be good. Hopefully we'll have a few more new names to add to the email chain. Uh, Mr. Henry, any other questions or comments that you had? Thank you for participating tonight. Uh, I guess I would like to say that when you've got five people or six or however many guys are in the game department basically running a program that is this huge and involve this many people with this many varied interests, that it's about time to get policymakers and lawmakers involved in the state and perhaps even at the national level to try to figure out a way or all the different ways or several different ways to, to make outdoor recreation and the OHB part of that something that will fit into everybody's um, agendas such that everybody can still have a good time. I look at Los Lunas and what they've done, Farm, you know what they've done. And they've got a community behind it. They got lots of people behind it. Other parts of our state have nobody behind it. All they're seeing is the abuse. I look at law enforcement and I say, There's, the state police aren't going to sit there and enforce this very often. They've got other priorities set by their policymakers and their legislators for the, 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 the local sheriffs. They're elected by each county. Some of them are going to be very favorable to looking at the issues with OHB, some are not. Um, there's just all kinds of priorities going around as to who is going to do it. But the game department got handed this many years ago. And so you've got some, you know, 45 statewide game wardens or 50 or something like that that are supposed to try to do the law enforcement. I think it's time at some point here in the future, as big as this industry is, and as all the conflicts that are coming up, that some of this stuff needs to eventually float up deal towards lawmakers uh, in our state. Uh, the Forest Service and the BLM, they have, the whole Southwest has one, to my knowledge, one, maybe two law enforcement officers in a quarter of the state the Forest Service has one or two in each national forest. There's got to be more done there, but there's also got to be more done in education. And five or six people in the game department is not going to be able to handle that. You need more staff, more money, more people, more interest from lawmakers, more interest from policymakers. I'm hushing now. Thank you. For, thank you for your comments, Steve. I really <laughs> appreciate them. All righty. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Mr. Seidel would echo your comments. All righty. Um, with that, I believe we are to that point of adjournment. And uh, as we have no quorum, I'll say it. Thank you Thanks. all for participating. We'll uh, consider this meeting adjourned at this point, And uh, we'll talk to you next time.